So, all right. So, welcome back to Bible and Blues. Uh, tonight it is Thursday night. I've done a bunch of stuff. Um, we kind of have some stuff going on. I have a little echo in here. I think it's actually just in the corner I'm in. I'll have to work on that. Might need to put some sound barrier up behind or something. Uh, but um, uh, I, I ran a cable, an Ethernet cable from my modem down to here. Uh, and uh, actually, <laughs> I conned my son. I shouldn't say I conned him. I didn't con him. I offered him a couple hours on the computer, uh, which he's been on restriction from for some time. Uh, to go up into the attic and help me run the cable. And he was up there like a split. He was ready to go. So I have the cable run. Uh, I'm running Audacity for my sound now. Uh, so I'm running through through that. Hopefully I'll get a, a better sound out of that that way. Um, and I'm still running the same camera. I had to move my lighting around because I had a big shadow behind me. Uh, caused by that light and that's uh, just had to adjust where it was at to reduce the shadow uh, so tonight we are going to read rooms chapter 12 how long has it been since i've read a chapter of rooms it's been a long time so let's see if we can remember where we were in, in uh in rooms uh chapter 12 on friday micah grabbed his mountain bike and rode north toward cannon beach he took the Cannon Beach Loop Road exit and rode past 50 or so gray houses, none with a view on the ri- none with the view their richer brothers west of them had of the ocean. He rode on past Tolavana Inn, then past Ocean Lodge and the Stephanie Inn, luxury hotels just steps from the sand. The sun poked holes in the fog, warming him inside and out. Perfect day for riding. Perfect day to run into that girl from the ice cream store. He laughed at himself. Couldn't fault a guy for dreaming. He wound up on the hi- up the hill that overlooked Haystack Rock, where houses were separated by inches, perched on the cliff leading down to, to the beach like rabid fans looking for a movie star's autograph. The Sand Trap Inn, with, pic- with, with a picture of B.C. cartoon character swinging a golf club, whizzed by on his right. Then he was down the hill on Cannon Beach's main street, with shop after shop filling, filled with trinkets and books and art for the coffee table or wall back home. Some wonderful, some that would end up on a garage sale table ten months later, or sooner. The town blurred by in thirty seconds. A minute after that, he rode over Ecola Creek, took a right-hand turn, and then ter- started up the, win- the winding mile-and-a-half road that led to the Ecola State Park. As he leaned into the first corner, His peripheral vision caught something up ahead. Fifty yards in front of him, the sun flashed against another bike. The dark chestnut hair hair swirled against the wind as the rider's head turned for an instant. Looked like the girl from Osborne's. Micah squinted and called out, Hey, Watson! She didn't turn. He put his head down and strained to catch her, but Micah didn't gain an inch as he pushed through the canopy of Sitka spruce trees lining lining the road. When the park entrance came into view, he prayed she wouldn't ride another two miles to Indian Beach and was rewarded as she swung left down to E. Cola. He coasted down the gradual decline into the parking lot and found her sitting on a picnic table, arms wrapped around her knees, looking out toward Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. She glanced back at his bike as his bike brake squealed, announcing his arrival, but didn't say anything. Hey, he approached her with with stutter steps, his legs still straddling his bike. We met the other day at Osborne's. Mr. Pralines, if I remember right. She spun to face him and flashed a smile. Good to see you again, Watson. It seemed funny before it came out of his mouth, but it fell flat when she simply said, Thanks. You ride up here often? Mostly during the off-season. Too many summer seekers driving driving this road during this time of year. It's a narrow road. I noticed. So are you staying in, staying right in the town? No, a little bit south. I'm Sarah Sabin, Micah Taylor. Sarah nodded. They looked at each other a moment and pat. They looked at each other, a moment pass awkward. Micah got off his bike, leaned it against the picnic table, and shifted his weight from one leg to the other. Want to walk down to where the trail washed out? She asked, breaking the silence. Sure. From the look of Sarah's long, muscular legs and her gait, he guessed her athleticism wasn't limited to biking. When they stopped, Haystack Rock, three miles south, filled their view. Below them, a, a beach stretched a quarter mile before it, st- before it stopped at a small cape jutting out into the ocean. 
Four otters ducked in and out of the swells 100 feet down. Crescent Beach, Sarah offered. You used to be able to walk down there from here. Not anymore. A winter mudslide washed out the, the trail back in 94. And they never rebuilt it. Bits, bits of the old wooden railing leaning, leading down to the beach were still visible. They walked in silence until they found a flat spot of grass to sit on with a perfect view of Haystack Rock and Cannon Beach in the distance. Sarah rubbed her left knee. When, he took her, her hand, when she took her hand away, it revealed three small scars, two on either side of her kneecap and one in the middle. Micah nodded at her knee. That's from ACL surgery. How'd the injury happen? She took so long to answer, Micah wondered if she'd hurt him. When she did, it was in a whisper. Olympic trials in 02. Winter Olympics? Skiing? Yeah. Wait a minute. You're that Sarah Sabin? Cover of Sports Illustrated? Supposed to win more gold than any other American female in history? She turns in with a small smile and nodded. After two surgeries and three years of trying to come back, I decided it was time to start another life. So five years ago, I came here. She ripped up tufts of grass and threw them up and let them float away toward the ocean and the breeze. Got away from the sport, the pressure, and the, and the guilt people loaded me down with for ruining their dream. Shouldn't it have been your dream? She laughed. It was, but others wanted to jump on board and do that whole live vicariously through me thing. Your dad, right? With him, just the opposite. He was, he was one of the few who truly didn't care how I, how I did on the slopes. He taught me to ski, was my coach for most of my career. He believed in me, was my champion, but never once pushed me to be something I didn't want to be. Dad loved me fiercely. She turned her head away. I miss him so much. Loved fiercely by your dad? He had no clue what that would feel like. Miss him? His dad has slaughtered any chance of having that emotion when Michael was a kid. Still, he blinked three times before he spoke. How'd he die? Cancer, four years ago. I'm sorry about your dad. I'm sorry about the injury, too. Don't be. Sometimes I can't help but wonder what might have been, but I don't have the slightest regret. How can you not have regrets? God works all for good. She looked out over the ocean. If it not for the accident and my dad's death, I think I'd be in a radically different world. Not a good one. One without God in it. Micah shifted his gaze to three sea lions basking on the rocks below them. He knew the radically different world she would have lived in. It was the one he lived in now. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea getting to know this girl. He didn't need someone else, someone else needling him about, about the God stuff. So, that's my dad. Tell me about yours. No. She laughed. No? Just no? You have a dad, don't you? She leaned back on her elbows and looked at him. Yep, still alive. And kind of an off-limits off subject. Got it. Great. First the God stuff, now questions about his dad. Julie never tried to make him go deep like this. He fished a twig out of the grass and tossed it toward the ocean. If you've ever been here, if you've been here five years, you must know everyone. The locals still say I'm new in town, but they're friendly, and, and yeah, I know most of them. She pulled up, pulled on the silver loop in her ear and smiled. Maybe you can introduce me around. Love to find out about the land my house is built on and its history. House? I inherited a home just south of Arcadia Beach State Park. There are six to seven homes along that stretch. Could you add some vagueness to your description? She winked. It's on the ocean. Does that help? Oh, that one, of course, Sarah laughed. It's kind of hard to miss. About 9,000 square feet. Wow, that big. I'm not sure I know it. He couldn't tell if she was teasing or not. She was bright and would know if a 9,000-square-foot home was built in a small town like Cannon Beach. You've got to be kidding, Micah chuckled. It's probably the biggest home from Astoria to Tillamook. And I mean right on the beach. Does that make it tough when the tide comes in? Are you always that literal? A grin broke on Sarah's face, and Micah matched it with one of his own. So how did, how did, wind, uh, so how did it wind up with you? She didn't say this with envy or curiosity or even judgment. He suspected the answer wouldn't matter to her either way. He liked that. Long story. I'd like to hear it sometime. It wasn't a come on. He knew it and she knew it and she knew he knew it. Another friend in Cannon Beach. Hmm. Could be a good thing. As long as the conversation avoided God and dads. How about dinner on Tuesday? No charge for a tour of the house or the story. Tuesday nights I have a standing date with 23 men and women who aren't as mobile as they once were. 
Old folks home? Mature folks home. I read to them, laugh with them. She paused. Sometimes cry. It's cliche to say, I know, but I get more out, more out of it than they do. Michael wondered if she if he should ask for another night, but Sarah saved him the trouble. Thursday night is open if your invitation is still on the table. Her dark, chocolate-colored eyes twinkled at him, and he assured her it was. As he rode home, he thought about Julie. Was there any hope for them? Did she care anymore? Did he? And what about this Sarah girl? He wasn't ready for another relationship. Micah shifted his bike into higher gear and bore down on the pedals. What was he worried about? It was just one dinner. And that's the end of chapter 12. So, Micah, who's been spending a lot more time in, uh, in, in Cannon Beach, now has a new friend, the ice cream girl, um, and who was a, uh, you know, a unsuccessful Olympiad. Um, but she sounds really nice, and she believes in God. How do you like that? It's like God's calling to him. Um, you know, it's kind of cool that he's meeting people of God who are very unpretentious. And as a person who uh, is in the faith, and I'm sure many of you are the same way, you know people who are not, but you ha- you 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 know to forgive them uh, if you're if you know, as a follower of Christ because that's that's their issue with God and they have to uh, deal with that. And I, I frequently you know I I frequently talk about how I love my little house and it's a little house, it's 1,200 square feet and it's. It has several small rooms in it. It doesn't have, you know, big, really big spaces in much of it. But um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, and it's fine. And it's just like he has that 9,000 square foot house. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, even how he came by it, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. And, she, and it's, it's great that he has Rick and now Sarah in his life as people who um, are followers of Christ. Uh, and I think one of the, one of the other neat things, aspects of it is that, um, he has people that, uh, that are going to kind of draw him that are not telling him they have to talk about God, but God is an important aspect in their lives. Uh, do you have people in your life like that? Do you have people who are in your life who are, uh, uh, followers of Jesus who are, uh, the relationship is very casual. Uh, God is incredibly important, but, um, you don't have to hit people over the head about it. Uh, but it's always there. Um, so some of us are not as good at that as others. I've been better at it than other times. Uh, so anyway, so that's uh, kind of one of the things that strikes me about it. I'm going to uh, uh, you know, do some editing and hopefully come out with something that you guys want to watch. Uh, so, hey, God bless. Have a great night. Uh, it is Thursday night and, uh, um, and almost 9 o'clock. I have time to edit this and get it out. That's great. Hey, God bless. Talk to you later.